Yes, I'll start recording now. Uh, then you can also uh, let people in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does anyone know what that chant was? <laughs> anyone? It's a chant. Huh? It's one type of the chant. Either one type of chant. <laughs> either it's sweet chant or it sounds more like a sweet chant. Ah, it's Liang Huan Chan. Ah, I found the Liang Huan Chan on uh, YouTube. Uh, I have never uh, done a Liang Huan Chan. Uh, so now I found the entire, you know, uh, 10 parts all on YouTube. So I think the next few days I will buy time. <laughs> uh, so uh, that rec what uh, I was playing uh, is uh, so I was saying to Jasper. Mm, so in the Chinese Buddhist tradition, uh, one of the most important uh, devotional practices uh, is uh, the performance of basically what in Tibetan Buddhism would be called purification practice. Uh, confession, you know, laying down, uh, putting down uh, negative actions, uh, the four powers and so on and so forth. But it has its own system. Uh, so normally in English it's called repentance. Uh, so it's a repentance ritual. Uh, this one has uh, 10 volumes to it, uh, and um, each one involves uh, a number of prostrations, uh, as well as uh, basically, uh, I mean, beautifully uh, chanted. Uh, the, the words are just um, beautifully composed. Uh, each volume takes about two hours um, for this uh, particular repentance and there is uh, 10 volumes mm, so I have found it now and so I think I'm going to do uh, the next few days uh, this 10 volumes of the what's known as the Emperor Liang uh, precious repentance this is attributed to an emperor uh, who his uh, consort the empress passed away uh, and then uh, he was very much uh, kind of concerned and interested in knowing where she had been reborn uh, because uh, in her lifetime uh, she did quite a few things to kind of obstruct his uh, great support of the buddhist tradition uh, he was born and raised a taoist and then at some point he converted to uh, Buddhist practice. So he's remembered as one of the greatest patrons of Buddhism uh, in the history of China. Uh, it was also him who apparently had a meeting with Bodhidharma when Bodhidharma arrived uh, from India in China and therefore uh, establishing the start of what's known as the Zen or the Chan tradition uh, in East Asia. And so this emperor, Emperor Wu of the Liang dynasty, uh, after his consort, his main, uh, his queen, uh, the empress, uh, the empress passed away. Um, he through some dreams and visions and consulting uh, some monks, um, it was discovered that she had been reborn in a rather uh, in in a negative state, and so then um, she requested him or something like that. I forgot exactly the mythology him to get all the um, monks uh, to come together to compile uh, a purification practice. Mm. And um, so this text was compiled mm. and then it became uh, the um, very popular repentance uh, text in Chinese Buddhism. Uh, there are parts where you sing, there are parts where you chant, there are parts where you do prostrations, beautifully uh, kind of um, choreographed. Um, anyway, I think Wei Ting just shared 
a, a link to some information about uh, this repentance. Anyway, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this uh, second teaching on the practice of uh, Parnashavari. Uh, Parnashavari is uh, the Sanskrit name. Parna uh, is uh, leaves, uh, leaves. Uh, Shavari uh, is the name of uh, the, the feminine form of the name of an ancient uh, Indian uh, tribe. Mm, so a member of the tribe would be called, uh, a, a, a woman member of the tribe would be called Shavari, and uh, the male member would be called Shavara. So this is the name of the deity that uh, we, mm, this is the name of the deity uh, of the particular form of Tara. Mm whose specialty uh, is to quell and prevent and to pacify uh, the spread of infectious diseases. So this is uh, on the external level, on the outer level, there is some kind of special interdependence. Uh, so that it is said that uh, the practice of this Dara called Panashavari uh, has the power to minimize the harm, first of all, to prevent. Then secondly, uh, if prevention is not possible, then it will minimize and quell the harm that comes from infectious diseases. Uh, infectious diseases, of course, is nothing new. Mm, historically, mm, there has been lots and lots of different types of infectious diseases. Uh, particularly in India, uh, and then even you know in Tibet, there was these frequent outbreaks of infectious diseases. Yeah. Of course, now you know the whole world is has become so small. Uh, so we know about the whole world. Uh, we know that our town that we live in is not the only world that is the world. Uh, we know that the uh, country that we live in is not the only world, uh, uh, that the world is bigger than our country, right? Uh, but you have to think also like in ancient times when people uh, did not move around that much, for the most part, you know, where they grew up and maybe a radius of like a hundred miles or so, that is what we could say the unknown world. Uh, for all intents and purposes, that was the world for them. And for sure, for these ancestors of ours, they uh, have had experiences uh, that is just as dramatic, just as traumatic, if not uh, experience even more destructive than what we have today. Uh, I was just listening to a, 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 a program on radio, um, that is uh, focused on uh, the um, focus on um, the plague uh, in the early 1900s, 1918, I think, what's called the Spanish flu, uh, which incidentally, you know, back then uh, there's less of a concern about uh, mistakenly naming things. Uh, the Spanish flu uh, was named Spanish flu, not because it's not even because it started in Spain, which it did not. It started because Spain um, was the first uh, kind of government uh, that allowed the reporting uh, of this flu uh, that was spreading. Uh, so influenza uh, is the origins of, uh, it's, it's the full word for what we call the flu, uh, influenza. Uh, influenza means to come under the influence of. Mm -hmm. So in the 19, early 1900s, uh, when the, this particular influenza uh, spread, uh, that became known as the Spanish flu, uh, all the other governments in Europe ganged up together. Uh, the, the heads of governments, they all knew. Uh, they told each other, do not allow uh, your country news to talk about this. Uh, 
but Spain wasn't part of this league of countries, and so they reported it, and that's how it ended up being named the Spanish flu. But anyway, I was listening to this program and was saying how uh, at that time, you know, they didn't even have any idea, you know, about um, how diseases spread and how to prevent disease. Uh, so it was even, in some ways, even more dramatic and more uh, terrifying for everyone. Um, so the situation that we are in now, even though, you know, it's objectively is correct. You can say uh, this is the first time that something, uh, a virus like this, uh, has spread all around the world, right? Now, why? Well, this is also the price that we have to pay. Uh, we never thought we had to pay, pay this price, but this is also the price that comes with how quickly we can get from one side of the world to another side of the world, to another side of the world, to another side of the world. I, for one, you know, I don't know uh, everyone, I, I'm not sure uh, who is all out there listening. Uh, I can guess that uh, maybe I, among this group, you know, I'm maybe not the most, but at least second or third most in terms of flying around. So I know, you know, this price now of being able to just fly anywhere and go anywhere also means that, you know, this virus, when you have a virus like this, that the human uh, species has never had to face, which is also, of course, the, you know, in the beginning with a lot of other types of viruses and, and bacteria, uh, it, it, it will spread, it will spread really fast. Uh, so now I think the news is that in Asia is seeing a second or even third wave uh, of infections because when it was just starting in Europe and United States, uh, this situation, uh, lots of people from Asia that lived here left and went home. And then when they went home, they brought with them uh, this virus. And now another wave is starting uh, in Asia. Uh, to say this, to talk about this, to, to tell you this, um, it's not intending to uh, bring even more fear and concern. Uh, on the one hand, I think we need to kind of see clearly and understand you know, what is going on and then no, uh, then more importantly, uh, just like, you know, the Four Noble Truths, uh, the Noble Truth of Dukkha uh, is we have to see Dukkha clearly. So, so we have to see clearly, right, the nature of how uh, this virus is spreading and see clearly to that negative karma uh, from the Buddhist perspective is what's um, kind of summoning, right, this virus to cause such havoc. Right? Uh, then, if the Buddha only taught about dukkha and did not teach about the end of dukkha, right, then it's kind of pointless. Right? But because dukkha has a beginning, therefore it has an end. Likewise, you know, we have to remember right, that also, you know, with this virus, um, it will have an end, you know. And when it ends, uh, yes, of course, um, there will be a lot of deaths and uh, compromise uh, health uh, and all variations of that. Um, I know some people who have already caught it and now recovering from it. Uh, personally, I don't know anyone personally or even once removed uh, of um, someone by name that we know uh, that have died for me. Uh, but for sure, you know, this is um, a very serious situation. But knowing that this is a very ser serious situation, uh, the best that we can do uh, is really to learn how to take care of ourselves and to take care of the people that is right in front of us. 
of course, we talk about the bodhisattva motivation. Of course, we talked about you know having compassion, having concern for all beings everywhere. But it doesn't mean you know sitting there worrying about you know the worst scenario, how bad is it going to get? Is it going to get worse, and so on and so forth. Yeah? That is not the bodhisattva's way. Yeah. And the Bodhisattva way can only be if we first know how to take care of ourselves and to protect ourselves. The body needs to be protected and the mind needs to be protected. Body and mind both needs to be protected. How to safeguard the heart. And body and mind are not actually two separate things. They're not two opposing things, yeah? body and mind. Yeah? Body influence mind, mind influence body, and they go back and forth and back and forth. Yeah? Sometimes it's easier to control the body, and then the mind is easier to manage. Sometimes it requires that we control the mind so that the body can also be more comfortable. So body and mind are interdependent. Now, of course, body and mind is interdependent. Of the two, yes, mind is chief. The Buddha taught, mind is the chief. Buddhists talk about six senses, which is the five sensory uh, there's five senses as we normally talk about it, and then mind being the sif, uh, the six. Uh, but this six, uh, this six, the mind, that uh, is said to be the boss, uh, and the other five uh, serve uh, the boss. So yes, mind is still primary, but at the same time, you know, we have to pay attention to the body. Uh, so please, you know, during this time. Take care of the body. Be good to the body. Being good to the body also means you know, knowing how to be good to the mind. You have to find time to exercise. You have to find time to make you know, nutritious food, good food, you know, so that then the mind can also be a little bit more relaxed and open. Then as you begin to train the mind, make it stronger and stronger, then body can also become stronger and stronger. So then when the body is strong, then it is not so susceptible right, to contagion. Likewise, when the mind is strong, it is also not so susceptible to contagion. Contagion is stuff that comes from the outside to compromise our basic constitution. So if our immune system, bodily speaking, is strong, then uh, we are much better protected. Likewise, uh, if our heart immune system is strong, then we are less influenced by all the things that comes in through the five doors, the five senses. We can let them come, we can let them go, and we need not be worried about it. So things can come and go. We remain unmoving. And when we understand this, when we understand this, when we know about this, right? When we ground ourselves in a clear understanding of what the Buddha already taught us about the nature of samsara, the unsatisfactory nature of samsara, the impermanent nature of samsara, when that becomes clear, you know, and given its impermanence, given its unreliability, what can we do? So this is when we practice to be free 
from afflictive emotions, then to be free from negative karma, and then to be free from external contagion. Uh, so it is emphasized, you know, uh, His Holiness of Dragon Kyabgan says, uh, this practice of Panashavari, uh, basically we have to cultivate this with love and compassion. We practice this with love and compassion. In other words, we practice this as our way to contribute to the quelling of the situation so that all beings, they are suffering, or in this case, human beings. It's human beings that are susceptible to this. That, that the human beings that are inhabiting the world right now, at this time, that we do this practice so that we can all be protected and to reduce the suffering, to reduce both outer suffering and inner suffering that has arisen. All of us, if we are listening to this, uh, we are very, very, very fortunate uh, compared to many others uh, in situations where um, they are, uh, they don't even have a home to stay in. Uh, in the U.S., we have had this, these orders uh, in every town, every state, uh, this thing called stay at home order. You can only stay at home, of course, if you actually have a home. There's a lot of people, even in the United States, uh, not, don't have uh, a home to stay in at this time. So we have to be aware of them. But again, we cannot let that knowledge overwhelm us. So we have to be strong. And then... But strong, not in a stubborn way of strong, but strength that comes from understanding. Strength that comes from clear understanding of what the Buddha taught. And how we can use what the Buddha taught in order to, to really respond to the challenges of the time in a way that would allow bodhicitta to grow and to increase. Uh, keep in mind that bodhicitta doesn't only mean uh, compassion. Compassion is an element, is a basic ingredient for the arising of bodhicitta. Without compassion, without kindness, loving kindness, without loving kindness and compassion, there's no possibility for bodhicitta to arise. But on the basis of love and compassion, then combined with understanding and wisdom, understanding and wisdom that knows where suffering comes from and how suffering can end. And then on that basis, we make that resolve. We make that determination that I need to become Buddha ASAP as soon as possible. Why? So that I will be in the best position to help guide others, to help lead others, to support others in their quest to be free from suffering. That is bodhicitta. So bodhicitta is not just compassion. Especially Kyoba Jigdinsungun emphasized this very strongly. He says, without love and compassion, there is no bodhicitta. Just love and compassion, not yet bodhicitta. So, love and compassion has to be the basis for practicing Panashavari. Then on top of that is bodhicitta. That is the most kind of uh, powerful medicine to cure all ills, it's bodhicitta. Uh, so before uh, we continue on to the sadhana of Panashavari, 
uh, which is Solanus has composed one based on uh, material from the collected works of Gyobhaji Ten Sungen. Uh, we'll look at that sadhana today. Last week, uh, when I did this program, exactly a week ago, uh, we only looked at the short praise uh, that uh, His Holiness gave at first. Then later, he compiled uh, the sadhana, uh, the longer practice. Uh, we have a YouTube channel uh, called Drigong Dharma Kirti Circle on YouTube. Uh, right now, I noticed that two people have subscribed to it. Uh, if you want uh, to easily find it, you know, next time you get to YouTube, uh, log into your YouTube account and then subscribe uh, to this channel. Uh, it has the Panashavari teachings. It also has the daily uh, Gongchik teachings that we've been doing. Uh, we've been meeting every day uh, at 9 o'clock, uh, my time 9 a.m., uh, Malaysian time 9 p.m., uh, we have been doing this, uh, and all those uh, classes are also available on this Jugong Dhamma Kirti Circle. But before we go to the sadhana, uh, let's see you know, if anyone has any uh, questions, uh, anyone has um, any comments, anything like that. Ah. Yes, Ellen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, <just laughs> <laughs> 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 it's good to hear other voices, you know. Uh, I live alone, you know. Uh, <laughs> so any questions or comments? Uh, mm -hmm. Just about, you know, the situation and how you are doing, you know. <laughs> Don't be shy. Yeah, <laughs> 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 No comments, huh? Oh, good. Okay. Everyone is shy. <laughs> mm. Actually, before we start uh, to look at the sadhana, uh, let's go to the praises, the short praise. Uh, um, Um, the long sadhana, uh, I think, realistically, uh, maybe most people um, might uh, have a hard time. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, yeah, so most people might have a hard time, uh, you know, doing the sadhana. Uh, because it can be complex, uh, it's kind of long, right? Uh, but what we can do um, is uh, the short uh, praise and the mantra. Uh, so there, there might be some people here who were not here the last time. And so uh, just for auspiciousness, uh, I will uh, now do uh, the reading transmission uh, for the uh, the verses of praise that uh, His Holiness uh, has compiled from the uh, collected works of Kyobhajik Densungen. Uh, 
So this is called praise in verses uh, to Paneshavari. Uh, so first I'll read in English and you just listen. And then after that, I'm going to read in Tibetan and you listen and, and just consider this as, you know, uh, the reading transmission uh, for this particular practice. Then when we reach the point of the mantra, uh, I'm going to say the mantra slowly and I'll say each part and you should repeat uh, after me uh, when I say the mantra. Uh, so then in that way, you also receive the transmission uh, for the mantra. From the mandala of Dharmakaya's great bliss, you protect against dangerous diseases like epidemics and so forth and the karma of untimely death. I pay homage to you, mother of wish-fulfilling activities. You golden-colored wilderness dweller on the lotus base. Your main face is golden, right blue, and left white. Your hair is bound up in a top knot, and you are full of splendor. I pay homage to the exalted body of the goddess granting accomplishments. You, Bhagavati, are the embodiment of wisdom and compassion. You are in the midst of masses of fire, burning like at the end of an eon. With your three faces and six arms, you look terrifyingly wrathful. I pay homage to you, whose one leg is stretched and the other bent. Wilderness dweller with exalted body clad in leaves, brandishing bow and arrow, battle axe and a bundle of leaves, showing the threatening mudra and holding a vajra, O Shabari, I pay homage to you, Great Mother, protectress of beings. Jugu deva jimbu gyogorini yamla zoba neki jingba dan dumin jile gyopara jipa ye dundu trinne yumla jasalo bime denla suribu vidroma sa we shasar ye yon mo danka uta dosu si ji denpa ye madula mo kula jasalo ye je duje dani jumdende Dude me pung da bung long kena, shasum jia du jing jie trung mo sha, sham ni kyung kun zi la zha zi lo, di tu lo ma ku la nam pa yi, da su da da xin lo ban pu zin, di su do jie nam pe sha wa di, yum xin zhu wei kun la zha zi lo. Um pi sha chi. Um pi sha chi. Parna Shavari. Parna Shavari. Sarvamari. Sarvamari. Prashamani. Prashamani. Hung. Some of you can unmute yourself so that I actually know that someone is following. Otherwise, I don't know where to pause. So a few of you can <laughs> unmute. <laughs> okay. So now repeat again the mantra. Om Pisachi. Om Pisachi. Varnashavari. Sarvamari. Sarvamari. Prashamani. Prashamani. Hong. Om. Pisachi. Pisachi. Arna Shavari. Arna Shavari. Sarva Mari. Sarva Mari. Prashamani. Prashamani. Hong Kong. So this uh, last syllable, Hong. Huh? The N sound is an N sound. Hung. 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 So this is a nasalization in the nasal. Hung. 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 So, yeah, so. Um, and establish all migratory beings without exception in that very same state. 
So then, uh, very briefly, yeah, here I want to uh, point out uh, the particular uh, form uh, and the particular mantra uh, of Panashavari that you find in this uh, Jopa Rinpoche's collection uh, is a little uh, from the more it's a little bit different uh, from the more common one. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, the more common one uh, uh, well, here let's look at uh, on page one the main body and face of Panashavari in this case is golden yellow. Right face, it says, is blue. Left is white. So this is the particular uh, form that is mentioned uh, in this praise. Then what is held in the six hands? Basically, um, all traditions of Panashavari with six hands, they hold the same implements. Uh, so no, no difference. Uh, difference might be which hand holding what, but basically the six instruments, uh, the six implements rather, uh, they are there. Uh, there is another, then the more common form of Panashavari, just to point out, because people like to get confused, then they panic because they think in Vajrayana everything is exact, you know. Then they find something that is a little different, then, you know, uh, Oh, wait, 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 how come this is this, that is that, you know? Uh, but uh, from my experience, you know, most Tibetans are kind of don't really pay much attention to all these things. <laughs> In part, uh, because to them, it's like, ah, there's so many details, no need to pay attention. So that's not a very good reason. But to others, uh, it's not so much that there are so many details we don't need to pay attention, but to others, uh, they... they because they, they understand more, you know, like, yeah, of course, these deities can have many different, different aspects. And so mantras can have different uh, variations. As long as we uh, understand the trans particular transmission that we got and make sure that within that transmission that there's no error, then that is enough. You see? So no, no, there's no benefit and even is even negative uh, if, if we argue and say, well, my transmission is correct, your transmission is wrong, you know, and say, oh, how come your your Panashavari, you know, uh, the right face is white and the left face is red? No, 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 it has to be this or that. No, 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 that that is not how it should be. But if within uh, one transmission, uh, if you have reason to be a little bit doubtful and said, uh, actually, is it this way? You know, then that's fine uh, to clarify. But once we understand that, oh, within this transmission, uh, the attributes are this way and the mantra is in this form, then no need uh, to worry about what other people's <laughs> transmissions are. Yeah. So in this transmission, the main face and body is golden yellow. And I said this golden yellow, I think is related to the earth. The earth being a source of all these precious herbs and healing medicine is, is, is derived from the earth, from the ground. Uh, so, in this case, her main color uh, is golden yellow uh, because of that. Then, in this case, her right face is blue, sky-like blue. Left face is white. Uh, this blue face, uh, is the head is tilted a little so that the blue is looking upwards uh, and the white is looking downwards. So, then the blue face looking upwards uh, is indicating the dharmakaya, the ultimate nature of Panashavari, is that she is the perfection of wisdom, you can say. 
at the mother of all Buddhas. So this is the unchanging Dharmakaya state. So blue is often the color associated with the unchanging Dharmakaya. So the unchanging Dharmakaya state with her right face looking upwards into the sky. That communicates the unchanging Dharmakaya state. Then uh, in the left, right, white color looking downwards, she is protecting and pacifying dangerous diseases like epidemics, untimely death, suffering. Because white is the color of pacifying, cooling down. So in this way, you know, his, her face, uh, this blue and this white, uh, I, you can see how it refers to the first uh, uh, verse of praise. From the mandala of Dharmakaya's great bliss. Meaning from there. Uh, meaning without departing from this Dharmakaya state. Uh, then on the relative level, uh, she manifests this form uh, to protect against dangerous diseases like epidemics and so forth and the karma of untimely death. Yeah. So this is why the color is the way that it is. So she's the embodiment of wisdom and compassion in the midst of masses of fire, burning like at the end of an eon. This is the kind of fire that burns away fevers, that burns away infectious diseases, that burns away negative karma. One time, uh, Gajan Rinpoche gave a very uh, brief uh, instruction on um, how to uh, burn away uh, pain. And this is also from Jigpin Sungan's uh, special instructions. Um, Gajan Rinpoche said, uh, when you have like physical pain, of course, you know, uh, go to the doctor and everything. Uh, but then if you have this physical pain that is so hard uh, to handle or to manage, he said, what you can do is you can place uh, your Yidam deity, whoever that is. Uh, and if she, he said, and if you don't have one, uh, then you can use Tara. And you can place an image of Tara uh, on the spot uh, where you have that pain. Uh, on that spot on your body where the pain uh, is. And then you can visualize fire coming out of Tara's body that little Tara that you have placed eh, at the spot where you have pain and let that fire burn that pain and burn it and burn it and burn it and burn until the pain disappears. He says, what happens is that you are, and he said, you use Tara if you don't have a Yidam. If you have a very strong Yidam practice, then you just use the Yidam. But if you don't have, he says, you put Tara because Tara's element, special element, is wind. And a lot of times, uh, pain in the body has to do with wind energy. Lung, I talked about that. Uh, wind energy getting blocked or getting stuck. So placing Tara there has created the tendril, the interdependence of wind energy moving smoother there. Then wind together with fire. And this fire is another form of energy, uh, which is the same form uh, that when you practice tummo, this heat. So that wind and heat, uh, lung, uh, and this tummo, uh, normally tummo, you know, of course, is in the central channel. But that same kind of intensity of heat can also be produced where the pain is. Then you visualize, you know, Tara's body, flames coming out, burning and burning, and you burn away the pain. 
So in the same way here, Panashavari, uh, you know, is in the midst of this fire. This is a, a different kind of fire. This is the fire that burns up fire, uh, burns up the fire of suffering, burns up the fire of oppressive heat, uh, so that this fire actually cools things down. Uh, <laughs> um, She holds bow and arrow. Bow is compassion, arrow is wisdom. So this, in a way, I, I last time, you, you can listen to more detail in the first recording, it's on the YouTube channel. But briefly, you, know, you can think of this bow and arrow as her instruments to protect against infectious diseases. So bow and arrow is used to what? Shoot targets that are far away. <laughs> so before infectious diseases get to you, her bow and arrow would shoot them down. Okay. Then her other instruments, uh, the um, noose, this rope uh, that is used to catch things, right? Now, uh, if they have come close enough, you know, you, you, you cannot uh, uh, kind of, you know, ch keep them further away. Then in that case, you know, now bravely pull it in, uh, the noose, right? She pulls in. Uh, again, that noose is the noose of compassion. Then with the wisdom of the Vajra wisdom, it smashes uh, that suffering. It smashes the negative karma. Vajra is indestructible, right? the most powerful weapon. Then the, 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 the other set of hands, actually the second set, first set is the noose and the Vajra, like this, first set. Second set is the leaves and the axe. Right? The leaves and the axe, uh, you could think of them as soft ways and uh, hard ways, forceful ways and soft ways of healing. The leaves are the medicinal leaves. The X uh, is like surgical, <laughs> you know, more intrusive. That's the second set. Third set of hands uh, is the bow and arrow. So this is very briefly. Um, so um, from the sadhana, uh, there are instructions on how to visualize. But since when we do the praise, we don't visualize ourselves as Panashavari. When we do the praise, um, feel, imagine, feel, visualize yourself as being in the presence of Panashavari. Feel that you're in the presence of Panashavari. I've also called her, you know, the wild medicine woman. <laughs> yeah. Because she lives in the wilderness. Part of her name in Tibetan, Logyonma, uh, Lomagyonma, uh, is the, the wild... Uh, the wilderness dweller that is dressed in leaves. And so she is this wild woman, but she is a medicine woman. She knows the arts of healing and preventing illness. That's Banashavari. So here uh, we feel ourselves to be in the presence of Banashavari. Then on, on the crown of Panashavari uh, is the, her teacher, uh, or you could say the lord of the family that she belongs. Uh, she belongs to the, of the five Buddha families, she belongs to the Karma family. Uh, she belongs to the Karma family. So on her crown is seated Amogasiddhi. 
the Buddha Amogasiddhi. Amogasiddhi's representation uh, is that uh, he is green in color. Uh, he has the appearance that is like usually how Buddhas are depicted, like how Buddha Shakyamuni is depicted. Uh, and like Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, the right hand is holding a begging bowl. But in this case, Amogasiddhi's left hand is like this. Uh, and this is the gesture of fearlessness. Do not be afraid. Because the karma family uh, is the activities, is the enlightened activities of the Buddhas. Uh, so this is an assurance uh, that these Buddha activities uh, are able uh, to protect us from suffering. Uh, so this fearlessness. So the visualization from the sadhana um, adapted to what, uh, how, we will do, how you should do uh, this praise and mantra is you feel yourself to be in the presence of Upanishadri. On top of her head is Amoga Siddhi. And as you recite the mantra from Amoga Siddhi's heart, the nectar or the elixir of protection and healing flows from his heart, comes out of his body, completely filling Banashavari uh, inside out completely with that nectar. And then it overflows from Banashavari's body and it comes down to us uh, like the Vajrasattva uh, visualization, if you're familiar with that. So this nectar comes into us, fill our body. As it goes into our body, it pushes down all the negative karma, afflictive emotions, illnesses, uh, contagion, you know, everything and anything that harms the body. It pushes it down. You know? Pushes down, pushes down, pushes down, 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 down. And it leaves our body. Uh, so that the whole body is filled uh, to the top, and then it comes down and flows down on the outside, completely filled with this nectar of healing and protection. So that's the basic visualization. And this visualization can be then extended to not just us. If you visualize Banashavari, gigantic, you know, covering, standing above our entire world, uh, this blue little marble in the universe. Uh, and she's standing above. Uh, and from there, you know, the nectar is flowing down and down and down and covering all of us, protecting us. So that's the basic, uh, if you want a visualization. If you don't want to do such complex visualization, then it's sufficient to just feel yourself to be in the presence of Banashavari and then do the mantra and do it with love, compassion, and wisdom. Yeah. So questions about this set of instructions. Any clarification needed? If you are shy, go ahead and type in the chat. Then we'll get someone to read out loud. <laughs> mm. Very beautiful. Good. <laughs> uh, Fabiola, can you look at the chat and see if there's any questions and if you can read for me? Just yes. read the question. Uh, the question says, at least one male? Uh, Mala, maybe. Mala, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's one Mala. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, you can chant as much or as little as you want, you know, depending on how much time, you know. More important is quality chanting, <laughs> quality practice. No more questions in the chat. Okay. In that case, let's together uh, say this uh, praise. Uh, we're going to say this in English. Uh, so you can now mute uh, all of you. Uh, we'll say this praise together, and then we'll do a little bit of the mantra before we continue on. From the mandala of Dharmakaya's great bliss, you protect against dangerous diseases like epidemics and so forth, and the karma of untimely death. I pay homage to you, mother of wish-fulfilling activities. You, golden colored wilderness dweller on the lotus base, your main face is golden, right blue, and left white. Your hair is bound up in the top knot, and you are full of splendor. I pay homage to the exalted body of the goddess granting accomplishments. You, Bhagavati, are the embodiment of wisdom and compassion. You are in the midst of masses of fire, burning like at the end of an eon. With your three faces and six arms, you look terrifyingly wrathful. I pay homage to you, whose one leg is stretched and the other bent. Wilderness dweller with exalted body clad in leaves, brandishing bow and arrow, battle axe and a bundle of leaves. Shower, showing the threatening mudra and holding a vajra, O Shavari, I pay homage to you, great mother, protectress of beings. Om Bhisa Jibana Javare Sarva Mare Prajamane Om Bhisa Jibana Javare Sarva Mare Prajamane Om Bhisa Jibana Javare Sarva Mare Prajamane Om Pisa Jipana Shavari Sarva Mari Prashamani 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 Om Pisa Jipana Shavari Sawamhari Prashamani 
ओम पे सजे पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम ओम पे सजे पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सजे पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सजे पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने पे सजे पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम 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 पे सजे पन शबरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सचि पन शबरे सर्वम हरे 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 प्राशमाने ओम पे सजे 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 पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सचि 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 पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सचि पन शबरे 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 सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने पे सचि पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सचि पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सचि पन शबरे सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने सर्वम हरे प्राशमाने ओम पे सचि पन शबरे 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 सर्वम हरे Peace and dependence of all of my personal peace and dependence of all of my personal peace and dependence of all of my personal 
Um be Om be saje bhana shavare sarva mari prashamane Om Now to the text the dedication by the power of this virtue, may I swiftly accomplish Banashavari and establish all migratory beings without exception in that very same state. Um, so, mm. at the first teaching last week, I said that um, if we are still not uh, familiar uh, with this deity, and when I say familiar with this deity, uh, you should not just think, oh, uh, I only know this deity uh, recently, and so I'm not familiar with it. You should not think like that. Because uh, we also say, you know, like there might be uh, connections from previous lifetimes. Uh, that for whatever reason, you know, there is some connection. Then even now, you know, even the first time you, 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 you see something, uh, forget about this topic, just in general, you know. Sometimes the first time you meet someone, the first time you see something, you know, immediately, you know, there's some sort of attraction, there's some kind of connection that you feel. So that's also possible, you know, with like Banashavari. Uh, but if you don't have yet, you know, this kind of like uh, recognition or, or connection that you immediately feel with Banashavari, uh, then mm, at the same time, it can be developed. Uh, so then to develop it, uh, a good way uh, is to do this praise and do the mantra. And do the praise and do the mantra. Then when you are confident or familiar uh, enough, uh, you feel like, you know, yeah, um, I, I feel, you know, like I, I want to take the next step. Uh, I want to do uh, uh, more, uh, the practice. Then you can uh, do the sadhana, uh, which is holiness compiled, 
uh, and also have that translated into uh, English and into uh, Chinese as well. Yeah. And that uh, is the text, uh, the other text. It's the Banashavari Sadhana from the collected works of Gyopaji Densumir. Uh, somebody sent in the uh, chat group earlier, I saw a link to download this text that is in Tibetan and English. Then sometime back, you know, maybe a few days ago, I also sent out this one that has the Chinese as well. So you might have that version, or you might have the version that is only English and Tibetan. So now let's take a look at that. I'm going to briefly go over that so that in case you want to try doing this practice, then you can do it. Uh, now, here is something that I should say, you know. Uh, they say that if you have never uh, attended uh, an empowerment uh, before and you're unfamiliar uh, with uh, visualization practice, particularly visualizing or imagining yourself as a deity, and you have not like been introduced to that practice through the empowerment, which is what the empowerment really is. It's uh, you being introduced in a formal way, how to encounter the deity, how to become the deity, which is what the empowerment ritual is for. And so they say that if you have never uh, attended and gone through an empowerment ritual where you understand at least a little bit of what's going on. You know? Sometimes uh, lots of people, especially Tibetans, you know, they'll go to empowerments, uh, Tibetans, Bhutanese, Nepali, uh, they'll go to empowerment and sit through with a lot of devotion. But at the end, if you ask them, what, what was that about? They, have, they will tell you, uh, I don't know, it's a blessing. <laughs> You know, they're content you know, to just attend empowerments and take it like, oh, it's a blessing. Uh, but what is it? Uh, uh, no idea. Uh, did you visualize as the Lama told you? They're like, I uh, didn't really hear what he was saying. <laughs> a lot of devotion. You know. But you know, what I was saying is that you know, if you have attended empowerment, and there's some explanation given, and you have some idea of what deity practice is, then even if you have not yet received the Panashavari empowerment, uh, my opinion is that it's okay uh, if you want to practice this. Uh, just so you know, uh, different teachers will have different opinions about this. Uh, my opinion is not just my own, it is based on one of our teachers in Rivunkagyu, uh, his uh, Nubar Rinpoche. Nubar Rinpoche says, he says, generally speaking, there are four classes uh, of uh, Tantra. Uh, there is the action Tantra, there is performance Tantra, there is yoga Tantra, that is unexcelled yoga Tantra or highest yoga Tantra. So all Vajrayana deity practice can be uh, organized into these four levels, uh, four categories. So Nubarambaje says, you know, as long as you have received, uh, and he, and he prefaces it by saying, this is my own opinion. Uh, this is how I feel about it. And he says, now other teachers might tell you something else. So he says, as long as you have received an empowerment from that particular level, then basically, if you get instructions, if you get guided, if you get understanding, then you can do any of the deities that belong to that level or that category. So that's why I said, if you have already received an empowerment before, uh, receive it in a way that you somewhat understood what was going on, or if you already have a Yidam practice, then you can do this Panashavari Sadhana, even if you have not yet received the specific empowerment of Panashavari. So that's first thing to be said. Uh, any questions before we proceed? 
Guru, there was earlier there was a question. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let me read out. Can we visualize the nectar flow to person we hope to pray for? For example, for us to a sick person. From yes, us. yes, of course. Mm -hmm. As someone who needs, you know, particular help at this moment, then you can specifically think of that person. Yes. Uh, if not now we go to the sadhana uh, is there a question i wanted to ask is yes. she different or separate from the 21 part sorry is she different from the 21 taras or is she considered one of the 21 taras or is in some systems of the 21 tara they say that Tara number 20 is Banashavari. In some system, again, different systems, different explanations. Okay. <laughs> but in some systems, uh, it is said uh, to be um, the uh, 20th uh, of the 21. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I heard. I want, yeah, yeah. wanted to hear what you say. Thank you. No, te lo dientes, mi amor, con buchecito. There's there's a question. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Uh, from Magda, I'm not sure about my. Okay, could you help me with a doubt? What which is the object in Panashavri's hand, in the center? Uh, we we will see in this sadhana actually. Yeah. We will see it in this sadhana. Clearly uh, laid out in the sadhana. Not so much in the praise. Huh? The praise just, you know, mentioned uh, without saying, you know, first hand, second hand, third hand. <laughs> <laughs> but the sadhana will, will, will specify. Huh? Right, first, second, third. Left, first, second, third. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, like all sadhana practice, you begin with doing refuge, followed by the four immeasurables. So that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, you, you see that yeah. in the Buddha Dharma and Supreme Assembly, I take refuge until awakening. Yeah, so that. And then, may all mother sentient beings, limitless as space, have happiness and the causes of happiness. So those two. So we begin with that. That's a very common, these two prayers are very common at the beginning of all practice. If you know the Dadangma, those who hate me, right? And those of you who attend the uh, Guru Puja practice, you have heard me talk about the Dadangma. If you know the Dadangma, um, in the, both the aspiration bodhicitta and engagement bodhicitta prayers, then you can start with that. Dala, Dangwa, Jebe, Dran, Opar, Jebe, Ge, that one. Then you do the refuge and the four immeasurables. Yeah. Next is the brief seven limbs or seven uh, part uh, puja which is this one that says prostrating, offering, confessing, rejoicing, beseeching, and supplicating. I dedicate whatever slight virtue I have gathered for the complete awakening of all. So this is basically the seven limbs, the sevenfold uh, puja uh, in one verse. So that is said to be uh, a, a very brief uh, way to accumulate uh, merit. Then, after that, 
the main practice. So this, these up until this point, these are all called uh, the preliminaries. So after the preliminaries, then there's the main practice. Then after the main practice, there is the dedication at the end. Uh, so this is called the three excellences. Excellent at the beginning, excellent in the middle, excellent at the end. Then the primary state of mind uh, when we cultivate the excellence at the beginning is the excellent motivation, which is bodhicitta. The primary kind of attitude we need to have during the main practice is non-grasping. In other words, don't be so tight. Don't be so fixated on, uh, oh, this is a good practice. Oh, this is a bad practice. Oh, this, I have this, uh, these signs. Oh, no, no, there's no signs today. Oh, it feels good today. Oh, it doesn't feel good today. Oh, this, all oh, that, you know? No, non-fixation, meaning uh, maintain a clear and relaxed mind uh, while doing the main practice, uh, the, the main part. Then the excellence at the end that we need to have uh, is the excellent dedication, uh, which is to say uh, at that point, uh, the conclusion is, the main attitude is, whatever good, uh, whatever benefit, uh, whatever blessings, whatever power that has been accumulated uh, through this session of practice, may it be dedicated to the awakening, to the freedom of suffering uh, of all beings. Uh, so these are the three kind of called the three excellences. Excellent in the beginning, excellent in the middle, and excellent at the end. So you enter the main practice by saying this mantra of emptiness, which is Om Swabhava Shuddha Sarva Dharma Swabhava Shuddha Hang. And these notes in smaller words in italics a uh, notes that Jidin Samuan gave. Uh, so he explains here very briefly. He says, this means that all phenomena, uh, all experiences, everything that exists and everything that we perceive, uh, they are primordially, completely pure by nature. Pure is Vajrayana's. Uh, what is called pure or pure? pristine in Vajrayana, in general Sutrayana, the vocabulary there is emptiness. Emptiness and pure are not two different things. It's, it's pointing at the same thing. It's, it's referring to the same thing. But in Vajrayana, the language used is pristine or pure, untainted. How, how, how is it pure? It's pure because it cannot be tainted. Cannot be tainted means its nature cannot be changed. And what is it that its nature cannot be changed? Emptiness. Its nature cannot be changed. By definition, emptiness means not changing, not coming, not going, no arising, no seizing. When described objectively, when described as a subjective experience, then it's the experience of freedom. Then it's the experience of not being fixated. Then it's the experience of not being stuck then it's the experience of being free. So it says, all experiences, which you can substitute the word phenomena with experiences, recognize that all our experiences at their core, they are emptiness, they are pure, they are spacious and free. But when we experience them, we don't experience them as such. We experience them as solid. We experience them as you know, real. And then we run into problems. 
then we run into problems. Then we also get stuck. Then we get entangled. Then we get all tied up. Then we increase suffering. So when you say this mantra, you say, what should I do? You know, what should I visualize? In the past, you know, uh, following what you can find in books and following how sometimes the instructions are given, uh, I would say to people, oh, you meditate, you know, you think everything melts away. And then all that there is, is this big spaciousness. Yeah. Uh, and I think you'll come across, you know, um, ways of explaining how to, what to meditate on, what to visualize, what to think, you know, when you say, Om Swabha Vashuddha Sarva Dharma Swabha Vashuddha Hang. And then let's say you read even the notes eh, in your mind. Eh? This means that all phenomena are primordially, completely pure by nature. Then now, what should you feel? What should you think? What should you visualize? I would say, more important at this point, you try to experience being free. You try to experience being flexible, being open, being spacious. No need to artificially think, oh, everything melt away. Because then you might just be doing a mental image. Oh, everything melt away. Or you're just repeating the words up in your head. Oh, everything melt away. So instead of being so focused on the technique of, of imagining everything melt into light, more try to experience space, openness, not being stuck, not being fixated, not frozen, completely open. Meaning then open to whatever to happen, you are all right. No bother, no worry, no concern. So you remain in that state, you remain in that meditation, then it says, next, and in the notes, Jitin Sumgun said, while meditating on this, meaning this spaciousness, this openness, this freedom, right? without leaving that state, without leaving that experience, then the words come. Next, my consciousness arise as a yellow bum syllable. My consciousness arise as a yellow bum syllable. And uh, now I'm going to share uh, the yellow bum syllable. Hey, wait, don't yellow bum. Oh, I will try to share the yellow bum. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see if this will work. I'm going to send it to someone and you all can share it to that link. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, here, I remember that you talk about uh, the samadhi of suchness. Here is when I need to meditate of the dissolution of, of that and this. Mm, not necessary. <laughs> okay. All those are very technical details, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, dissolution, death, you know, entering the body, then arising again, you know, all those are so detailed that I think, you know, 
most of us, you know, unfortunately, uh, I've said this before, you know, like uh, when lamas who travel teach, um, because they travel to places so infrequently, so then one weekend, you know, one afternoon, they give everything, you know, that you're supposed to do. Then when people listen to that, you know, half the people are like, oh my God, not possible, not going to do. Then maybe half will say, okay, I'll do. Then you'll do you know, half that does it. Instead of really doing it, all you're doing is you're repeating whether repeating in words or repeating in your head. Oh, now think of this, now think this, now think this, now think this, now think this, you know? But you're not experiencing it, you know? You're just thinking it. I remember as a child, you know, growing up, uh, there was a point uh, where history classes was really torturous. <laughs> Because the teachers who taught me history up until I was 15 or 13, up until I, I was 13, I remember this very clearly, up until I was 13, the teachers who taught history taught it as a bunch of dates and a bunch of names. This happened this year, this happened this year, when this happened this year, then this happened on this year, then when this happened on this year, it led to this happening on this year, you know. Sometimes I feel like, you know, all this, yeah. yeah, of course, history is a lot of dates, it's a lot of names, no doubt. Deity yoga is a lot of steps, it's a lot of details, it's a lot of uh, terms, it's a lot of terminologies, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. But you know, as a child, I hated history because of that. Then when I was 13, we had a history teacher. She came into class and the first thing she said was, I'm going to be telling stories. She said, I'm going to be telling stories. And I'm going to be telling um, stories and then I'm going to explore with you what do these stories mean? And suddenly everything changed, you know, for me. Then she said, to help you to understand what I mean when I'm going to tell you a story, he said, when you're listening to me telling you the story, Try to imagine you are in that story. And then she kind of laughed. She said, maybe not as the main character, but uh, imagine yourself being present, standing on the side. As I tell you what happened in history on this year, who was there, what important things happen, who was involved, what did it le lead to, and so on and so forth. From that point, you know, history became my favorite subject. <laughs> Same, I think, with visualization practice. First, we need to feel it. We need to be able to have this kind of come alive. We have to be able to smell the flowers that are blooming. We have to be able to feel the heat of that fire around her. We have to be able to imagine what she might smell like, and not only what she looks like, or what she sounds like. The texture of her skin, the sharpness of her axe, the herbs that she's holding in her hands. We have to be able to feel, touch, smell, taste even. 
what that is like. Then it becomes alive, you know. Then later, you know, uh, the dates, the names, what happened first, what happened second, all that will come into place. They will fall into place very naturally. Yeah. When it says my consciousness arise, right? You should not think this is me and this is my consciousness. This is also very technical, the language here. When it says my consciousness arise as a yellow bum syllable, you should think, you know, I am now in the form of a bum syllable. You should think that. Because again, you know, when you have uh, when you have been given these instructions, you think my consciousness. Then you you sitting, you're meditating, uh, or you're chanting here, my consciousness arises a yellow bum syllable, and you think yellow bum, oh that is my consciousness. You know. Then there's already me here, consciousness over there. <laughs> no, that which is thinking. Oh, that is my consciousness. That, that is the consciousness. And that has to be yellow bum. So in Buddhist psychology, when consciousness and what consciousness is conscious of is interdependent. So when you think of, say, Milarepa, in that moment, you become Milarepa. When you think of tomato in that moment, in that moment that you're thinking of tomato, you have become tomato. <laughs> Don't think too much about Trump, okay? Because in that moment, you become Trump. That's the underlying principle here. So when it says my consciousness arises as yellow bum, right? Don't think my consciousness arises as yellow bum. Immediately, yeah, your mind should be on the bum. And when your mind is resting on the bum, you know, you're like, well, because I'm thinking of bum, therefore I am bum right now. Then from there, uh, from it, light rays radiate, purifying the diseases and impairments. That means all the problems of all beings in particular and all their wrongdoings and obscurations in general. Wrongdoings meaning negative karmic causes and obscurations are subtle coverings, confusions. So this light comes up from this bum, goes in all directions doing that. Then the light return into this bum, which instantly transforms into Bhagavati Parinashavari, who is the mother of the Buddhas of the three times. There you pause a little, and feel yeah, this that this bum now turns into mm, Banashavari. And Banashavari is the mother of all Buddhas. Uh, because it's Pranyaparamita, it's the perfection of wisdom. All Buddhas became Buddhas uh, when they finally achieved the perfection of wisdom. That's why the perfection of wisdom is the mother of all Buddhas. Then it says, huh? uh, body yellow color, three faces, central face yellow, huh? yellow golden, same word in Tibetan, sir. 
left face white, right face blue, six arms. So here is the position of the arms. Uh, the translation here, I have to, I, I will, uh, uh, yeah, so the translation here, it's okay. In the Tibetan, it, it, it says first, second, third, first, second, third. Then, of course, I can imagine people going, wait, first, second, third, you mean like first is here, second is here, and third is here? Or first is here, second is here, and third is there, <laughs> you know? So the English here, I think they have tried to clarify it. It says, my lower right hand holds a Vajra. Then the middle hand holds a battle axe, and the upper hand holds an arrow. My lower hand displays the threatening mudra holding a noose. Middle, a bundle of leaves, and upper, a bow. Because we are only used to having two hands, you know? So it's kind of hard to imagine the logistics of having six hands. I mean, if you try to really imagine six hands, you know, you're like, okay, these two, where are the other four going to grow out of? From this armpit here, <laughs> side of the body, or from back here, you know? <laughs> so you might have some questions like that, you know? But this is also, remember the main part of the practice, do not fixate. They say that this form that we visualize has to be like a hologram. It's holographic in nature. So uh, nature of light, uh, but three-dimensional. Uh, but in, as a light body, three-dimensional, anything is possible. So even a thousand arms, you know, you don't have the logistical problems of where are the arms all going to grow out of? Uh, are they all joined to the same point that they're emerging from? Uh, or are they all around your body? Because this is a holographic image, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's possible. So this is the description here. I am sitting. Hmm. On a white lotus, it says. I'm sitting on a white lotus in the midst of masses of fire. The bum syllable at the heart transforms into lotus and moon with a yellow bum syllable on top. So, the, so there is a bum syllable in the center of your heart. It turns into lotus and moon. So lotus at the bottom, moon, and a palm. So inside the heart, basically inside the heart is a lotus, a moon disc, and then the yellow palm. That is in the inside. Then from there, light rays radiate to invite the wisdom beings to come. Wisdom beings is basically the actual wisdom of Panashavari, meaning the essence of Panashavari, to come and merge into yourself, to become non-dual. And you do that while reciting the mantra of Ja Hong Bam Ho. That's the mudra. Uh, don't worry if you don't know how to do the mudra. <laughs> More important than the mudra, you know, the mudra is to help us coordinate body, speech, and mind. So that ultimately the mind is focused, anchored. But if you just do mudras, but then the mind is somewhere else, yeah, then it's not 
that very meaningful, you know. So here, za hong bam ho. Za, um, uh, so with the notes from Jiten Sumgun, is to summon, uh, is to call forth uh, the wisdom being. Hung is to absorb the wisdom being. Bam is to unite with the wisdom being. Ho uh, is the state of rejoicing, uh, being happy that, ah, now I am completely one with Banashawari. So this this these notes from Judaism right, is very useful. Uh, I believe Judaism uh, uh, did not, you know, emphasize uh, necessarily the chanting of this. Uh, he 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 tend to uh, not so much write ritual texts. Uh, he he gives more like instructions to people. So probably this, right, is in a situation where there is like some epidemic or some infectious diseases and people come to him and say, what should I do? Then he will say, first meditate on this, then meditate this, then meditate like this, then meditate like that, then meditate like that, now go. So they were primarily meditations. Anyway, so now yeah, continuing, it says, we merge becoming inseparable, meaning the wisdom beings, uh, the actual essence of Panashavari, and myself has become one. After this, we request empowerment from the five Buddha families. Even after you have become one with Banashavari, you say, well, then why do I still need empowerment? Well, Holiness, His Holiness explained, he said, uh, this is to further stabilize uh, your confidence, your conviction that you are indeed uh, the deity. So he says, in case it is not enough, uh, that you think, you know, you and Panashavari has become one. Now you can request uh, the Buddhas to assist by giving you empowerment, by empowering you, by giving power to you to actualize uh, Panashavari. And so here, light goes out to invite the empowerment deities. The empowerment deities, it is said, consists of three groups. The male and female Buddhas, the male and female Bodhisattvas, and the male and female wrathful protectors. They all come to give empowerment. But when you have invited the deities the, the empowerment deities to come. First, you present them with offerings. Kind of like the polite thing to do. Uh, if you're going to ask something from them, uh, you should make offerings to them. So in this next section is the offering of the five senses. Pushpam first, smell. Uh, 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 pushpam is, uh, let's see. Wait, let's go to, uh, so is Pushpam, Dupam, Alokam, Gandam, or, or Gande, and Naivedim. Uh, so this is variations in Sanskrit. Uh, sometimes it's Pushpe, Dupe, Aloke, Gande, Naivede. Uh, here, uh, it's uh, uh, Pushpam, Dupam, Alokam, Gandam, and Naivedim. Uh, so some variations in the Sanskrit. So here, uh, pushpam is flowers. Dupam is uh, incense. Alokam is light. Gandam is perfume. Yeah? And nevedim yeah? is food. 
So it's not the five senses. I'm mistaken here. Uh, um pentacula. Pentacula is the five families. The Buddhas are the five directions. Buddhas are the five families. Sapariwara, meaning the Buddhas and all their retinue. We make these five offerings to them. Then with the mantra, Om Sarvatata Gata Abhisinjatu Mam. With this mantra, you request them for empowerment, as it is said here in the text. Then with the next mantra, in the next mantra, uh, think of it as not you saying it, but the Buddhas saying, Om Sarva, it's sort of like they answer. You request them empowerment by saying, Om Sarva Tathagata Abhisinjatu Mam. Then they answer, they answer, Om Sarva Tathagata Abhishekata Samaya Shriye Hum. And with that, they are giving us empowerment. So we imagine them pouring this nectar of empowerment into the crown. Of course, now we are Panashavari. Pour into our crown, go into our body, filling our body, purifying all the farmers. Then, then until the whole body is filled, and then the the nectar, the empowerment water would flow up, you know, filling inside until it's completely full. Then it comes out. As and it comes out, it turns into Amoga Siddhi. which is the Lord, the head of the karma family. Then the empowerment deities dissolve into the crown. Actually, here it says dissolves into me, which is what the Tibetan says. But actually, what it's talking about is not like me, Panashawari, but it dissolves into the crown, which is Amoga Siddhi. The empowerment deities dissolve into that area where the crown is, the head. The wisdom deity become one with you completely. The empowerment deities, they are above. Because in, in a way, the empowerment deities, they represent our guides. So to have our guides, so to say, sitting above on our crown is a constant reminder of the Dharma. Then now, um, you make the eight offerings to Panashavari. Then you say, wait, I am Panashavari. Yes, you're making offerings to yourself now. So, Om Pisachi Panashavari Sapariwara Argam Praticha Soha Padyang Praticha Soha Pushpam. You substitute. Then, after the eight offerings, it says, After your body, speech, and mind have been blessed, that is referring to the wisdom beings and you becoming one. And you have been granted the empowerment by the five Buddha families in three groups. You have meditated on the symbol of empowerment. What that means there is you understand the meaning of empowerment and so on. Then recite the verses of praise. The verses of praise here is what we did in the short practice. But the translation in English here is a little different from the version that I gave you, that we were looking at. Um, frankly, I don't quite like, uh, for example, the first slide, out of the mandala of Dharmakaya's great bliss. Uh, I think that is a little confusing, out of the mandala. My translation that I gave you is within out of the mandala seems to suggest that she left. 
Dharmakaya's great bliss. But no, she never departs from Dharmakaya's great bliss. Anyway, you say the praise. Then visualization during mantra recitation. You, you found that page? Uh, in the version with the Chinese, it's page nine. In the version without the Chinese, I'm not sure what page that is. <laughs> it's after the, the praise in four verses. Here it says, that crown uh, that you're wearing as Panashavari, uh, it has the five victorious ones, meaning the five Buddhas. Uh, and, and all the deities of the five families, uh, they are there on the crown. And from their hearts uh, flow streams of milky nectar uh, coming out and filling your body. And this is like the visualization that I recommended at the beginning during the short practice. But here, the difference is your body is Panashavari. So instead of having Panashavari in front, right? And from her crown, all this nectar start flowing and filling her body, coming out of her body and then coming into your body. Here, just yourself is Panashavari. On your crown are the five Buddhas, male, female, Bodhisattvas, male, female, Rafu deities, they all uh, are up here in the form of the crown, which is Amoga Siddhi. You can visualize just Amoga Siddhi, or you can also visualize the five Buddhas. But again, don't be so rigid. Don't be so like, oh, I have to think about this, I have to think about this, but don't think. Try not to think, but to experience, to feel, like my history teacher says, you know. Don't 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 read, you know, this this account. Huh? And 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 try to think about, oh, then this happened, then this happened, then. But imagine yourself being a witness to this. Uh, what is described uh, in history books. Uh, same here. So this nectar fills your body. Then you chant the mantra. Om bi sati panashavari sawamari prashamani hong. Om bi sati panashavari sawamari prashamani hong. Om bi sati panashavari sawamari prashamani hong. You recite that. Then after however number of mantras you want to do, the next part is practicing to protect all others. So here the visualization says, it says, in a region, a country, or wherever I wish, the whole space is filled with the five sugatas, and the five Buddhas, and the goddess Panashavari. From them, now here, you know, you can think of the five Buddhas as basically residing on Panashavari. So yourself is Panashavari, but wherever you're trying to protect, whoever you're trying to protect, above them there's another Panashavari, and likewise nectar is flowing. Then from them, from that Panashavari in front, into whoever or wherever you want to protect. From them, streams of nectar flow down, fill the bodies of the deceased, those who are afflicted with disease, the region or country, and all diseases and harms are pacified. Then again, you chant Om Bi Shashipanasavari Sawamari Prashamani Hong, Om Bi Sajipanasavari Sawamari Prashamani Hong, Om Bi Sajipanasavari Sawamari Prashamani Hong. Chant however many mantras you want, then at the end you do the eight offerings again. Om Bi Sajipanashavari Saparivara Argam Patichaswaha, Om Bi Sajipanashavari Saparivara Padyang Patichaswaha. Then a short praise, just the first verse again. Within the mandala of Dharmakaya's great bliss, you protect against dangerous diseases. 
such as epidemics and untimely death. You say that praise one time. Then, uh, kind of making apologies. It says, whatever I could not procure, whatever has deteriorated, whatever I did with a deluded mind, confused mind, or made others do, may you forgive all of that. Then recite hundred syllable mantras. The hundred syllable mantra, recite three times. Yeah, after that, now here, notice that the dissolution is not clearly given. The dissolution is not clearly given. So what we do is, after we finish Vajrasattva, then we can dissolve. So the front, whoever you are trying to protect, right, they all dissolve into Panashavari's heart, the Panashavari in front. Then Panashavari dissolve into you, who is also Panashavari, then yourself dissolve, and then you just remain there in meditation for a little bit. Then you say the words of auspiciousness, and then you say the aspiration prayer. And then in that way, the sadhana is complete. It's a lot here huh? if you're not used to deity yoga. But if you're used to deity yoga, this is uh, pretty straightforward. Questions? Hello. <laughs> no questions, but uh, thank you so much for all these explanations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so briefly, this is very quickly, you know, but I, uh, I want to go back you know, and make the point that uh, uh, really uh, try to just more directly connect uh, to this this, this particular form of Tara, huh? and just do the simple verses of praise, and then do the mantra, huh? and if you can visualize the nectar flowing and protecting everyone, huh? that is good. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So Thank the you. aspiration prayer here, uh, together we say this. Uh, so uh, actually the words of auspiciousness, uh, the last two prayers on this text here, uh, we'll say this together. May the great Vajadara, the true Lama, who is the essence of all Buddhas, grant the auspiciousness of the goddess Panashavari to all beings of the three realms without exception and to myself. Glorious goddess Panashavari, you liberate all others and myself from the infliction of great harm. Having taken refuge in you, sublime goddess, 
Please protect us from all dangers. Yeah, so um, it's a lot, you know, what we covered. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's available uh, soon uh, to watch on uh, YouTube. Um, on I will. This uh, YouTube channel that we have created. Uh, so it's called Jigong Dharma Kirti Circle. Uh, and go there and subscribe. Then whenever we have new videos, uh, it, it, you will know. So be well. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. You're joining us, Guru Puja. Tomorrow, we will have Guru Puja starting at nine. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas noches. Good night. Buenas noches. Gracias. Good morning. It's our lunchtime. <laughs> Buenas noches. Good night. Yeah.